Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to talk about how eBay and more importantly, eBay managed payments affect QuickBooks. Hello, my name is Anne Patrick. I'm a Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer and also that QuickBooks chap. One of the recent changes to eBay at the moment and the way that eBay interacts with its customers and more importantly with its sellers is managed payment. Now, what is managed payment? Well, first of all, if you are a seller, you're going to know about it sooner rather than later because it's something, it's a change that being is forced upon all of us. Effectively, eBay is taking back control of how it manages the payment side in terms of getting money from the actual person who's bought the item off you and they're going to control the whole process. Prior to this change, it was PayPal that was in charge of managing the payment side of things and we used to utilize PayPal to be able to be the way in which we would interact and taking money from our actual sale of goods. With eBay managed payments though, it comes a lot around with a lot of differences. Whereas before we were having to kind of rely on making sure our PayPal account was always reconciled in QuickBooks, eBay payments re reduces the need of that as the money gets paid directly into your bank account. But with that comes some added complications and that's what we're gonna look at today. First of all, it gives your buyers some extra functionality. So as we'll see here, you have the opportunity now to pay by things like Apple Pay. So that should encourage people to buy from eBay more frequently because it makes it even easier for someone who doesn't have a PayPal account quickly go and make a payment for something. Innovations like Apple Pay and Google Pay and all them ones are starting to become essential for online purchase because it gives added security for the people buying and also gives a lot less friction for them. eBay payments also eliminates the need for you to have to worry about fees at the end of a month because each one of your transactions is going to incorporate all of those fees directly in, in it at the same time. Therefore, that what you get paid is exclusive of all the fees. That's a great thing for cash flow. That means that we don't have to worry about that final month fee to worry about. But what that does mean for you is you're going to have to worry about making sure your bookkeeping is absolutely spot on because what money arrives in your bank account won't necessarily reflect what's actually been sold and the value that's been sold. And remember how important it is that we make sure our total sales is that it's total sales. We want to make sure that any fees and everything that's all been accounted for, because remember that total sales is going to be the figure that reflects how much, because remember that total sales has all bearing of different connotations for you. It could de determine how much or how complicated your tax return is going to be because of over certain threshold, you have to disclose more information. It could be that you're going towards that VAT threshold limit and you need to be making sure that you're showing your gross sales to make sure you're over or under or whatever the, the situation is going to be. Overall, we need to be careful of it. In this video, we've sold this little fella and we're going to follow its little journey of how this went from being put onto eBay all the way from money receiving in our bank account. And we're going to record that money into QuickBooks and show you exactly how we would do that to make sure we're doing it in the right way. So let's have a look. If we look over here and we move over to our emails, the first thing that we're interested in is we care about this email that's come through. So when you've made a sale on eBay, this is the first thing that's going to arrive. You're going to have this email that's come through to, con to confirm the fact that the money's come, come in. And then this email, it gives us an opportunity to look at the details and that's what we're going to look at now. So the detail is going to be really important to us because although we've sold this for an amount, again, the money that's received in our bank account won't reflect the true amount that this sold for. So let's go and look at the detail, make sure we're 100% happy on what actually this sold for. Okay, so what we're gonna look at now is the payout screen. And when you click on the link on that email, it's gonna take you to this screen here. And in this screen, we can see what's actually happened. So first of all, you get a payout ID. This is gonna be important because this is gonna give us an opportunity to look exactly at what's actually happened. And this payout ID here, if you click onto it, gives an ability to see that information in more detail. You can see what the buyer was, what the details was, and we can see everything we need. Clicking on the order number takes us to our eBay order page. And this is where we can understand a little bit more detail exactly what's actually been sold. 
So during this process of selling this guy, we accept an offer of £6.99p. We also took £2.85 in terms of postage fare for this guy. So in total, we're looking at £9.84 that we've sold. Now when it comes to how much money we received in the bank account, we go back to that original figure and you'll see we received £8.19. So within there, we've been automatically deducted some form of fees and we need to make sure A, we understand the fees are right so that if there's anything we need to go back to eBay, we can. And also importantly for this video, we need to make sure we can then record those rightly in QuickBooks itself. Because it's this £8.19 we're gonna see come into our bank account, but that's not the end of the story. That's only the amount that we're gonna to want to record and that's the amount we wanna show coming into our bank so our bank reconciles but in a transactional point of view, remember, we want to show £9.84. Okay, let's look at what's happened in QuickBooks so far. Okay, so let's look at what's happened in our banking section. So I jump into banking. You'll notice I have one item there, £8.19. Now the description just says eBay payment. If I click into it though, and look at my bank detail just here, you'll notice that that code there reflects to what we saw on this amount here, £8.19. £8.19. So now we've seen the transaction appear into QuickBooks, we now need to make sure we're dealing with it correct. So your first step is to put it into QuickBooks into one of the categories. Now what I would do here is I would make my life easier. So what I want to do is first of all, I want to make sure that I've got this right, eBay payments. And I know now I've received some money into my bank, so I need to record this transaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the concept of a control account. Now a control account is effectively a way for you to be confident that you're doing things correctly. A control account, especially in this case, will always become zero when you've posted everything that it should be. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to set that control account up just now. I want to make sure that every time I receive eBay, I want this category to be eBay payment. Now there will be multiple ways we deal with this, but I'm gonna show you this way as probably the best way to do it for completeness. I will also show you a shortcut of how to complete it later down the line if you are someone who wants to get it done nice and quickly. Okay then, so I'm gonna create a cash at bank in hand called eBay payments and save and close. Now, if you are VAT registered, you're gonna to have to deal with your VAT properly, but for this one, I'm just gonna put it to no VAT, just so we can see the trend, the actual amount itself. So I'm not gonna deal with VAT in this particular. When it comes to supplier and customer though, I am gonna put this against eBay, and I'm gonna create a brand new customer called eBay. And then with that, I've got £8.19 received into my bank account, but I'm not posting it against any categories, as in any sales categories, I'm posting it to what we would call a control account. Now, to take this one step further, you probably wanna look at putting some sort of rule in place so every time your eBay payments come in, they're automatically sent over to the right place. Now, what that means is if I look at my dashboard, my bank accounts are now correct, but I now have this new account called eBay payments just here. And eBay payments at the moment isn't zero. And if my control account isn't zero, I know I've still got some extra work to do to get it to work. And what I can do now, if I jump into eBay payments, I can create the £8.19 transaction to bring this back down to zero. So let's see how I do that. I'm gonna call it a sales receipt. So that's sales receipt. And I'm basically gonna take the information directly from eBay itself. And to do this, to make this easier for myself, I can download a payment summary or transaction detail. And transaction details to me sounds like the best solution. So in here, it's given me all the details I need, including how much it was and the final value fee and the final value variable fee as well. Also, if there's any other payments that have come through, I would see them coming off as well. But what I'm interested in is this £1.65 here, which if you take away from this element here, which is what I've made, £9.84, then that will give me back to my £8.19. So all the information I need is directly on here. So under sales receipt, I've got my eBay sales, and I'm gonna create a brand new product and service for this one and I'm gonna put this against my sales account. And again, just to get things nice and straightforward, I'm gonna get rid of no VAT. I'm not gonna include VAT whatsoever. And I might even want to show you my delivery. So what I've done now is I've left the transaction itself down the bottom here, so we can refer back to it as we're going along. So first part is I want to put in there eBay sales. Then I wanna make sure I've got my postage. So let's call that postage. And I'm gonna put this against a different account so that I can see if I'm making money or losing money overall when it comes to postage. Then I need to make sure I account for my fees. 
So I'm going to put eBay fee service. And the important thing here is that I show this as a cost of sales. So I've got one called agent fees. And again, eBay fees, there's a second one, but it's there. Now what I've effectively created now is a template. And I can set this template so that I can automatically create it and utilize it every time I, I want to record the sale. So my description on this one is how much I sold it for. So this one was item subtotal £6.99, postage £2.85, eBay fee, and this one is my final value, okay. negative 36, it's important we do negative here, and then I have my final value fee variable. And that's how I get back to my £8.19. Now remember that I have the option here to put an attachment in. So I can click on attachments, find the file that I'm using. So now I've completed my sales item. And remember I can turn this into a template so I can use it again, make it nice and easy for myself. But if I have all these split out, I can then put each element in to make sure I come back to the figure I need to come back to. The most important thing before you press save though, is you change your deposit account to that eBay save and click. Now more importantly than anything, my eBay payments figure and my control account is at zero. Remember, our control account must be zero to prove that we've done everything correctly. So we've got an eBay payments of zero, if I click into it, we've got £8.19 up here, £8.19. And if I was to run a report, so if I go and look at my profit and loss report, and I change it to today, then as you can see, everything split out nicely for me on my profit and loss. And key to everything is I'm showing £9.84 as my total income. Completely honest with you, that is a long-winded way of doing things. And if you had to do this for every single transaction, clearly that's going to take you a lot of time. So here's my pro tip. First of all, I would highly encourage everyone to keep using that control account. But instead of posting your sales and everything else on a day-by-day -day basis or an item-by-item -item basis, which was I was showing there, then consider a weekly or a monthly way of posting it. That's gonna speed it things up for you because you've got one transaction to put in there and as long as your eBay control account comes back to zero, then you're good to go. Another way of speeding things up, and it's a separate video I'm gonna do for you later, is how can we use integrations, how can we use third-party app to deal with this element for you? Because at the end of the day, this has nothing to do with QuickBook. This is all down to the transactions that are in eBay. So we need to find ways in which we can extract that information and put it in. What QuickBooks is doing for us correctly is telling us what's happened in our bank account. And it's really simple what's happened in our bank account. We received £8.19, so we record £8.19. If you are going to do this on a longer transactional basis, so if you are doing it on a daily, monthly, weekly scenario, I would highly recommend that when you get your transaction report I've got here, is just use subtotals at the bottom and add all them up on Excel. Take that file, put it into QuickBooks, and you'll be absolutely golden. Another massive time saver, don't forget to use Boffix. Boffix themselves, this is what they do as bread and butter. They take the information and they do your bookkeeping for you. So for a low fee, you can give them all the information they need so that they can put all these transactions in and keep it all up to date for you. They'll be doing the bookkeeping, so you just carry on doing the reselling. So what have we learned from this? If I look at the profit and loss account, this little fella was sold for £6.99. We then took £2.85 worth of postage, and then we've got the agent fees of £1.65 in total. And if I click on there, there's a breakdown of those fees for me. As I said, we'll look into how to speed this process up in a later video. One quick tip is how to create this into a template. Well, all you do is you get back to that sales receipt that we created together. And from the sales receipt, what we need to do is use enable recurring payments. And from here, we get to create it as a template itself. You can then set it to recur automatically and put it to a particular schedule, or you can make it as unscheduled and then just recall it whenever you need it. So that's it. That's dealing with it in its entirety. That's taking the payment element and put it into each one. Now coming up in the next couple of videos, we're gonna look at how to make that process faster for you by using third party, how to make sure you account for it on a month by month basis. So as I said before, we could look at doing it on a month by month basis. Once I have a month load of transactions, I'll be putting that in and I'll be showing you exactly how that's done. And then I'm also gonna be looking at how QuickBooks self-employed and how we can deal with it. This isn't the end of the road, but this is definitely going to give you a head start in how to account for it. Because remember, we need to be making sure that when those transactions hit QuickBooks, we want to be putting them in at the right level. If you have any questions on this, please, please, please use that comment section below. It's exactly what it's there for. And it was you guys putting the comments below that made sure that I got onto this video pretty pronto. Now that I've got been, been accepted for eBay payments, fast payments, 
I'm going to be making sure that you get the content you need to make sure that you're putting that information properly into QuickBooks. And if you are using any other solution out there other than QuickBooks, just use the same methodology. Use a control account, make it easy on yourself. With that, I've been the QuickBooks guy. It's been a pleasure to do the video for you and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Yeah, 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 yeah